whole idea behind Vidivo with K. Arthur is I like K. Arthur. <laughs> so you're stuck. <laughs> Well, you got to have the facts where they're coming from, so that's the truth. But, no, seriously, we decided to, I've already gone through this book once in video devotionals, and I don't remember if I did it in emotional or where I did it, but we went through Speak to My Heart, O God, by K. Arthur, and if I happen to come up with another book from either, you know, the library or someplace, you know, who knows, we may do another one. But... Vidivo with K. Arthur is the idea of taking these devotionals, reading them, expounding upon them, and participating in them together. Because I used to go to the women's, it wasn't really called the women's Bible study, it was kind of like a Thursday morning Bible study with Romaine. <laughs> and the only people that were there on Thursday morning were women. <laughs> and me. <laughs> but it was far out. It was exciting. It was dynamic. It was really good, actually. I really enjoyed it. And I missed that. And then I went one time to a, a women's Bible study, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And then at Calvary Costa Mesa, during the um, School of the Bible that we had on Wednesday night, it was this one time kind of like thing that Chuck was trying. We had something that shocked a lot of people. We had a woman teaching men. <gasps> I mean, she was a Jewish woman and she was teaching Matthew and she gave such a great perspective that anybody that went to the Bible study was blessed but I remember that it was like a big controversy in those days you know like oh no what happened you know women don't teach men so I don't know where you're at on men women pastors elders deacons whatever you know, I don't really care you know because I'm not going there you know, if your format is structured for, you know, men teaching men and women teaching women and, you know, kind of that thing and you got to, you know, do your thing that way, well, fine, you know, okay, it's the deal, you know. But I can enjoy what I employ based upon what the Spirit of God leads me and instructs me to share in all wisdom and knowledge, entertaining those people that would likewise find themselves of like mind led by the Spirit of God to hear what it is that God would say through K. Arthur and speak to us all of us male female adult young children whatever that through the wisdom that she's learned over the years we would be blessed because it wouldn't matter who it came from male or female it comes from God we're taught by God and we're led by God so having said all that who cares where it came from it's the Spirit of God that's leading us it's the Spirit of God that's guiding us we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Romans 8, 28, 30. And this is from Words of Faith. And this is... When you wonder if life has any purpose, hmm, like Arsenio used to go, hmm, Arsenio Hall, why was I born? What is the purpose of my existence? What am I worth to God? Have you ever asked yourself these questions? I have. In fact, I was considering all this just the other day as I sat in my big old chair where I often pray, worshiping our Father by rehearsing aloud all that he has done. As I did, my mind was, my mind went into the amazing truths of Ephesians 1. I thought of the magnificence and the power of our Father creating the world and informing man from the dust of the earth. Then I thought of Ephesians 1 4. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Awesome, isn't it? If you think about it. To think that even before God created the heavens and the earth, He knew you. He knew me. He chose you. He chose me. That's a shock. Following this, my mind went to the fact that God has the course of history all planned out. Every detail, every windstorm, every hurricane, every natural phenomenon is not a natural phenomenon. It's all planned out. 
God's plan wasn't broadsided by Satan in the garden when the evil deceiver tempted Adam and Eve to sin. Everything was already in place, for Jesus was already the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And so I began to thank our Father for making known to us the mystery of his will and for the administration of that mystery hidden in God for all these ages. Ephesians 1, 9 through 10, and Ephesians 3, 9 through 10. Look those up. They're important. You should read them in context and in before and after, meaning context, all of it. It's a blessing. God has a plan and neither man nor the devil can thwart it. Then my mind went on to Ephesians 2.10 where he tells us that before the foundation of the world, our Father prepared the good work that we are to walk in. Talk about understanding our worth. Talk about knowing what our lives have a purpose. Do you know this truth, my friend? Are you living in the light of it? Are you aware that God has the plan? He doesn't just have the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his plan. He's got the whole world in his plan. He's got the whole wide world in his plan. He's got the whole world in his plan. He's got the whole world in his plan. Yeah, you and me. He's got you and me, baby, in his plan. <laughs> you know, we're in his plan. Do you realize how absolutely precious you are to God? Do you realize the significance of your life? It has a purpose, a specific purpose, a purpose God has in mind. As Ephesians 1.11 says, we live according to His purpose, and His purpose is always the very best. You're not an accident, oh, you may think so, <laughs> you may have been told so, but God said no so, <laughs> I know, I planned it. You are not useless. You may feel useless, you may look useless, and you may act useless, but God has a purpose, and because he has a purpose, he has a plan, and because he planned out your purpose, he has a purpose and a plan, and that makes you useful. <laughs> you are not worthless, you are not unredeemable. Your worth and purpose in this life do not depend on who you are, or on what you have done, or on what has been done to you. Your worth and your purpose do not depend on where you've been. Even if you've been to the very precipice, the edge of hell itself. Your worth and purpose depend on God and God alone. His will, His calling, His choosing, His love. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and we would be blameless and we would be before Him. In love, he predestined us to adoption through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. God paid the dearest of prices to redeem you with your life of sin. God paid the dearest of prices to redeem you from your life of sin and independence from him. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. You were condemned to death row for all eternity, and justly so because of your sin. Yet the Father gave his Son to die in your place by the most brutal of deaths. He did this when you were still walking your own way, not even realizing the price he was paying. Had you known it, you probably wouldn't even have cared. That's how lost you were. But God loved you when you were his enemy still. When you were a sinner, ungodly and without hope, he loved you, he pursued you, he wooed you, he brought you to himself, and he did not let go until you gave in and succumbed to his desire to be your father, your God, your Lord, your master, and your redeemer. Read Romans 5. Have you begun to comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of Jesus' love for you? A love that surpasses knowledge, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21? Or are you walking around, you know, lost in the maze of the enemy's lies? Are you blocked at every turn by thoughts and feelings that lead you down some dead-end path again and again and again? Are you confused not knowing where to go? Do you not know where to turn? Or what to do because you are being led by your own emotions, by your own feelings? by your own opinions, 
or by the counsel of others that are telling you what to do, where to go, how to live, and how to be? Or are you rather by the living by the absolute truth of God's inerrant word? Do you know what the word of God says about you? Our peace, our happiness, our well-being, our soundness of mind, our effectiveness all go back to what we believe and whom we believe. Who do you believe? What do you believe? How do you believe? And whom do you believe? It does not matter what you experience, what you feel, what you think, or what you hear. If it does not agree with the word of God, then it is a lie and it has its origins with the great deceiver and the father of lies. John 8, 44. Don't miss the knowledge of your worth and your purpose in this life by believing his lies. Choose to believe God, no matter what. Ultimately, it then comes down to this. Where will you put your faith? Who will you put your faith in? What will you put your faith in? In the character of God, in the word of God, or in a lie? You alone can decide that. It's really up to you. This is the choice God gives you and no one can decide for you. Everything you are going through, all that you are dealing with, has one ultimate purpose. That you may know the love of God and live in the light of his extravagant and more than adequate grace, which has been poured out upon you so that you would know him personally. This is what you were born for, an intimate relationship with God himself. That is the purpose of your existence. That is what you are worth to him. That is why he died for you. But this intimate relationship requires two things. First, that you were set aside time so your Heavenly Father can communicate with you through his word and through his spirit. That he can talk to you. That you can walk with him. That you could listen and you could understand and know him. Second, that you spend time communicating with him in prayer, being recognizing that he wants to speak with you as much as you want to speak with him. If you want intimacy with God your Father, then you will have to make the time for it. And if you realize that it must be your highest priority, then nothing, absolutely nothing will stop you. When nothing stops you and you put yourself in the position for God to meet with you, you will find that everything else falls into proper perspective because you know his voice when he says, this is the way, walk in. And you will walk in confidence knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 I can think of no better way to say it than the way they said it. And the way she said it is the way it is. So don't be confused, abused, or rused into losing your joy or following some afterwards way that you think you know or understand, but rather take the time today to pray, to walk, talk, live, and exist with God your Father so that you would learn the right way to walk in and you would not be discouraged. And that rather, instead of wondering if life has any purpose or whether you fit into the plan of God, you'll recognize by knowing Him that God already had planned for your perfect place, that He has prepared a place for you, and that He's going to put the final touches on you and on it before He brings you home again to Himself. But in the meantime, he has a plan for you. He has a purpose. He has a design. He told everyone all about it in heaven to the angels long before you were born. So guess what? Live it.